Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and this is question number two from the January 2020 Statistics S1 at Excel paper, International A level. And um, here we have a question about a group of 40 families that was asked whether their family had a dog, a cat, or a rabbit as pets. So there was no family that had a dog and a rabbit both at the same time. Two families had both a dog and a cat. 12 families had a dog. 14 cat families had a cat. 11 families had a rabbit. And nine families did not have any of these above uh, animals as pets. A family from this group is selected at random. D represents the event that the family has a dog. C represents the event that the family has a cat. R represents the event that the family has a rabbit. Draw a Venn diagram to illustrate this information. So there's no family that had a dog and a rabbit. Two families had both a dog and a cat. Okay, and 12 families had a dog. So that those families that had a dog, it doesn't mean only dog. It means they could have had some other, I mean, they could have, you know, it includes the ones that have a dog and a cat as well. Okay, so this too is included in, in this and on this too is also included in that. Okay, so we'll see when we draw the di diagram how that will be shown. So I'm going to draw a circle. Draw a circle. I'm going to cheat a bit and draw. Have one from this particular program drawn. So there's a circle that say represents one of them. I'm going to just just copy it and paste it. So I have one, two, three circles. Okay, so I have three circles. One represents a dog. One represents cats, and the other one represents rabbits. Now, there's no family that had dog and a rabbit. So there's no intersection between dog and rabbit. So if I take this as, say, dog, and this as rabbit, there's no intersection between those two. Okay, so I'll start off with those two. So say that's dog and that's rabbit. They have no intersection between them. Okay, they are called mutually exclusive. When there's, you know, there's nothing that will, that you, there's nobody that you can ask, which will, they can say, I own a dog and a rabbit. Okay, so either they own a dog or a rabbit, not 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 both of them at the same time. And then it says um, two families own both a dog and a cat, and twelve families own a dog, and fourteen cat, um, families own a, a cat, and eleven families own a rabbit. So there's intersection between the cat and the dog, and also the cat and the rabbits. There's an intersection there. Okay, so I'm just put C over here. Okay, and then there's also those people who didn't own any of them, but they're with the, in this group. So there's going to be uh, like the universal set, which represents all 40 people that were asked. Now, some of the people are not in these three circles, but they're still within that group of 40. So those are going to be inside the universal set. Okay, so let's start filling in the values that we know. It says uh, two families had both a dog and a cat. So that goes over here. Both a dog and a cat. Um, 12 families had a dog. Okay, so the whole of this circle has to be 12. So there's just 10 missing. That goes over there. So 10 people had just only a dog only. And 12 people had a dog, including the ones that own a cat as well. And then it says 14 families had a cat. Now, I can't really place any number. I know there's 12 more to place in this circle, but I don't know where to place them because I don't know how many go here and how many go there right now. So I won't place that yet. Then it says 11 families had a rabbit. Similarly, I don't know where to place, um, you know, I know some, some will own a cat and a rabbit, some will own just a rabbit, but I don't know, uh, you know, how many there are in this and that, so I can't place that right now. And it says nine families did not have any of these animals as pets. So I know that there's nine in this section here. Okay, so I could do uh, a couple of things. Um, what I could do is I could call this X. Then the ones that own just, the, own, the ones that own a cat and a rabbit. That means the ones that own just a rabbit are going to be 11 minus x. That's going to be 11 minus x. The total has to be 11 here. And I know that there's altogether uh, 14. Is it 14? Have a cat. So there's 14 altogether in this area here. So two are taken up. Okay, so there's 12 in this area here. So this is going to be 12 minus x. I'll just write here 12 minus x because 
there's 14 altogether in the circle. 2 is taken up there, so there's 12 minus x here, x here, and 11 minus x here. Now, what I can do is I know that in these three sections, okay, there is 40 minus the rest because altogether there's 40. So if I do 40 take away these numbers here, that's 12 plus 9, which is 21. 40 minus 21 is going to be um, 19. So I know all of these add up to 19. Okay, there's 40 in the whole group altogether. This is 12 plus 9, which is 21. So that means left behind in these three areas is 19. So if I add these three together, 12 minus x plus x plus 11 minus x, it's going to give me 19. Okay, so this is going to be 12 plus 11, which is 23. They cancel out minus x equals 19. So 23 minus 19 equals x. So x is going to be 4. So I know that there are 4 here. So I can get rid of this x and call it 4. There's 11 minus 4 here. So that's going to be 11 minus 4, which is 7. And there's 12 minus 4 here, and 12 minus 4 is 8. In the, in the real exam, I wouldn't actually cross that out because that's at my steps. So um, I'm just doing this for convenience sake now. So now we can just make sure that we're correct. There should be 12 in this circle, which there are. There should be 14 in this circle, cat, which there are. There should be 11 in this circle, which there are, and 9 outside. And they should all add up to 40. Just make sure of that quickly. That's 12 plus 8, 20, 24. 31, 31 plus 9 is 40. So it seems like we've got the correct diagram. Okay. All right, that's part A. Now for part B. It says, state giving a reason a pair of mutually exclusive events from D, C, and R. We already mentioned, actually, that the D circle and the R circle have no intersection. They're mutually exclusive. You can't pick somebody at the same time who owns a dog and also a rabbit. Okay. So they're mutually exclusive events. So we can say D and R. Okay, are mutually exclusive. Why? Because the probability of D intersection R is equal to zero, or you could say D intersection R is equal to an empty set. Any of those would do. Okay, um, that's the reason basically. Empty set is like a circle with a line going through it. Okay, so the probability of D intersection R is zero means there's no intersection between them, or D intersection R is zero is an empty set. Those are both uh, ways of stating. The reason why they are mutually exclusive then it says find the probability that the family has exactly two of these kinds of animals as pets so exactly two means the ones in these intersections so you've got two plus six sorry two plus four okay divided by the total which is 40 which is going to be six over 40 which simplifies to three over 20 so there's the answer for part c the probability that yeah, they own exactly two of these kinds of animals, either a dog or a, and a cat, or a cat and a rabbit. Okay, now, then it says, showing your working clearly, determine whether or not the events D and C are independent. So what we need to do is find, we need to write down the probability of C, which we can find from the top. The probability of C, the probability that somebody owns a cat, is going to be 14 over 40. That's 14 over 40. Okay, and that simplifies divided by 2, 7 over 20. And the probability that somebody owns a dog is equal to the number of dogs was uh, 14. So that's 14. Um, sorry, have I done a mistake there? What was cat? Uh, cat was 14. Oh, dog is 12, sorry. Dog, probability that somebody owns a dog is 12 over 40. Okay, so you can divide that by... 4. four. Twelve 12 divided by 4 is 3. 40 divided by 4 is 10. So that's 3 over 10. And the probability that the cat intersection dog is going to be what? Cat intersection dog is 2 out of 40. 2 out of 40, which is 1 over 20. Now, if they are independent, if independent then we can say that the probability of C intersection D will be the same as the probability of C multiplied by the probability of D, if they're independent. Okay, so here we've got the probability of C intersection D, okay, because the probability of C times the probability of D is equal to 
7 over 20 times 3 over 10, which is 21 over 200, which doesn't simplify to 1 over 20. Okay, so therefore we can say they, that the probability of C intersection D is not equal to the probability of C times the probability of D. Therefore, they are not independent. Okay, just about run out of space there, but I hope that was clear. So to show clearly, you have to show what the probability of C is and what the probability of D is. Multiply them together, which gives you 21 over 200, and you see that the probability of C in section D is not the same as that. Therefore, they are not independent. If the probability of C in section D was the same as the probability of C times the probability of D, then you know they would be independent. Okay, so there's part D done. Now for part E. All right, it says Sarah's family is in the group and her family has a pet cat. Find the probability that Sarah's family also has a pet rabbit. So let me just get the Venn diagram. Okay, here we are, the Venn diagram from the previous page, which we need. So it's saying she is in the group and her family has a pet cat. Find the probability that she also has a pet rabbit. So what they're asking you is to consider the fact that she, she's, uh, you find the probability that she owns a rabbit given that she has a cat. So what that means is they want you to limit your sample space to the ones that own a cat. So that is your total sample space. It's not the all 40 people now who are, who are in this survey. It's only the ones that, that own a cat. Okay, so what, what the answer for this will be, the probability that R given C in this case is going to be the ones that own a cat okay will be the total prob the total sample space which is going to be 14 and we want to find the probability that the person owns a rabbit which is four out of this you know circle that we're considering we're only considering the circle so i don't say 11 i say four because th those are the four people that own a rabbit which also own a cat so it's four out of 14 which is two over seven okay you can also think about it in a different way we know that from uh, generally in the formula book it even mentions I think the probability of A given B is the probability of A intersection B over the probability of B so in this case we would have the probability of R rabbit given cat is a probability of the intersection between rabbit and cat over the probability of cat and you'll see that's exactly the same it's the intersection between rabbit and cat which is 4 over the probability of cat which is going to be 14 which gives us 2 over 7. So whichever way you think about it, in terms of Venn diagrams or in terms of this formula, you get the same answer, 2 over 7. And there's the answer to part E. Now for part F, it says, uh, find the exact value of the probability of D union R given C complement. So if I follow exactly what I just mentioned just now, the probability of D union R okay given c complement is going to be the probability of the intersection between d union r and c complement okay over the probability of c complement so you want to find the probability of the intersection between these two, okay, and the probability of C complement will be our denominator. So C complement is everything outside of the circle C. It's everything outside of the circle C. Let me just get rid of this um, shading for now, okay, and I'll put a new shading in now because um, our Basically, our sample space is everything outside of C. So our sample space includes this, this, and this. That is our sample space, everything outside of C. Okay, so I have to add those together, and that gives me 10 plus 7 plus 9, which is going to be 19 plus 7, which is 26. So it's over 26. Okay, and we want to find the probability that of D union R intersection C complement. So it has to be in D or R and it has to be outside of C. So it's going to be these 17. These are 17 items that are outside of C, outside of the C, but they're inside D and R. 
So it's going to be 10 plus 7 over 26. 10 plus 7 over 26. So that's the answer here, 17 over 26. We can also think of this um, in terms of, as I mentioned, we're considering that our sample space as what's outside of C, so that's our denominator, and we want to find the probability that they're inside D and R, so it's going to be this and this, okay, this and this, which is inside D and R but outside of C, okay, it can't be inside C, we're only considering the spaces which are outside of C, so the parts that are outside of C and inside D and R are 10 and 7, 17, over the total amount outside of C, which is 26. So 17 over 26 is the answer to part F, exact value, so leave it as a fraction like that. And there we have the answer to part F. And we have now completed question number two from January 2020, S1. Uh, other questions from this paper will be found in the playlist that should appear in this area. Other questions about probability in S1 should appear in this playlist. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link that should appear here. And on the top of the page, there'll be a link to other um, papers, um, S1 papers that I have answered. Thank you for watching and see you soon.